In the halcyon days of the early 1990s, Jim Lee's Wildstorm Studios boasted a crop of young artists such as J. Scott Campbell, Alex Garner, Brett Booth, and Aaron Wiesenfeld. However, one humble talent would rise meteorically to the heights of the industry and influence an entire generation of artists, Travis Charest. On the pod, Dwight and Adrian discuss Charest's beginnings in the early 90s as an up-and-comer himself penciling DC's Dark Stars, being recruited by Jim Lee to Wildstorm Studios, and drawing an amazing run of Wildcats under the scripting of the GOAT himself, Alan Moore. They also discuss the comic that launched Shrey into the pantheon of comic art greats, Wildcats, X-Men, The Golden Age. That issue, along with a second run on Wildcats and a plethora of lush illustrated covers, influenced the industry throughout the end of the 90s. And finally, Dwight and Adrian end things with what could possibly be Sheree's masterpiece, The Dream Shifters, written by Alejandro Jodorowsky. This book was highly anticipated for nearly three years, but was it worth the wait? Did Sheree exhaust the limits of his talent, as some say the late great Bernie Wrightson did with his magnificent Frankenstein illustrations? Regardless if you pronounce it Cherist or Sheree, we can all agree that this once-in-a-generation talent can simply be known as Travis. Thanks for listening. So what what prompted this episode was that... um Recently, I had seen an advertisement uh, for a new book coming out from Mark Millar, the writer Mark Millar, uh, from his Millerverse. Okay. Uh, Miller Miller, Miller, yeah, Miller, yeah, Miller, 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 yeah, Miller, 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 Oh, boy. That sounds like some old bad, yeah, badass kid. Anyway, some people might argue that that is him. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. <laughs> but, right. but, uh, but yeah, I'd seen an advertisement, I think either a solicitation for a, a new book of his coming out uh, that he's doing with Frank Quitely. Anyway, as mm-hmm. with um, Miller, he has a ton of variant covers, you know, coming out for this new mm-hmm. book, you know. And one of those mm-hmm, covers mm-hmm. has, well, there's two of them. And both of them are by uh, the subject of today's episode, Travis Sheree. Travis, Travis, Travis. Travis. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yes, <Dude>. sir. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and it got me art overboard. Sure can help myself. <laughs> Sheree overboard. <laughs> 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 oh man oh man but um yeah man um and with that it really reminded me that you know you really don't see a lot of travis nowadays i mean he does variant covers mm-hmm. and you know certain spot illustrations here and there and if you go to his website you see that he still takes commissions actively you know what i'm saying now, now, now you gotta have the mm-hmm. coin though you definitely gotta have come with that bread oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hardcore green, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. But he's worth it. And it got me to thinking yeah. that, you know, you know, he has had a long career. And his career really, really took off about 95. You know what I'm saying? But by 97, mm-hmm. with the advent of, like, Wildcats X-Men, the Golden Age, when that book came out right sir. there, right there. Right. Sh- Right. That it was game yeah, yeah. over for like the next almost five cha- years. And it's like the, the, Yeah, it changed the landscape of comics. Man. Sure did. Sure did. And yeah. the industry for those five years followed wherever he went. You saw like comic book artists change over well almost overnight to like that same type of thin line rapidograph style. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then he started mm-hmm. doing an ink wash, so you had a ton of people saying, oh, I'm going to do some ink wash, too. All right, bet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, and then people started taking, like, his little inking ticks, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm, and it was, mm-hmm. it was just crazy, but he could back it up. Like, and he had been building to that yeah. point, too. Like, it, uh, it was almost as if, like, you know, I could imagine... You know, you grew up in the 80s, a comics reader, and I could imagine mm-hmm. 
every time like a Bill Sienkiewicz cover came out, it was an event because it was fully painted, which you really didn't yeah. see a lot of, you know, in those days. And it was just so right. original and crazy looking, but just on yeah. point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And with yeah. Sheree, yeah. it was it was the same thing. Like when he started breaking out like that ink wash and then doing like those painted illustrated covers. Man, man, killing it, man, killing it, man. All that, all that stuff, man. I mean, my my first my first uh, real reckoning re- reckoning of Sheree was was those Wildstorm covers, man. Was, was those Wildcats covers, man? Mm. I mean, when you when you have when you when you have when you have um, that that beautiful, like you said, pedigraph fine line style, and you have you have uh, was it Spartan standing there uh, facing facing the, that 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 uh, that demon like demonite character? I, I, I know the, the cover you talking about. Wet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Woo, woo. And then you have Santino in the distance, like kind of broken down, and kind of like it's a, it's the, the character Santino, the, it's like a silhouette of his face. Yeah. Absolutely nailed, absolutely nailed it, man. That was the beginning of seeing how detailed Travis is going to be. Man. Oh, that shut. was his breakout. That's man, for crazy. Me. Yeah, you know, in fact, I have that cover right here on my desk. Uh, it's uh, Wildcats nice. number sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, but man, nice. It, it, and, and it's and it's wild. No pun intended. <laughs> right. It's wild, just how he came into the industry in like ninety two, and this is like at the height mm-hmm. of like you know. Images just starting to form like those guys are breaking off. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And so to yep, kind of right. get in the industry at that time, you almost had to draw like a Jim Lee or a Rob Liefeld or mm-hmm. whatever. So mm-hmm. um, Sheree, he by his own admission, he says that he got into, you know, wanting to make art for comics when he read an issue of Uncanny X-Men. Um in okay. like 90... John Byrne? No, no, no. This is uh, Jim Lee's, yeah. believe it or not. Jim, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah. that makes sense. And he was just like, wow, he had never seen like, you know... <laughs> and to quote him, he said he had never really seen, you know, artwork that looked like that and it was so energetic and everything. He mm-hmm. was like, you know, I think I want to give this a try, mm-hmm. you know? So he said he mm-hmm. took a year mm-hmm. and he built up some samples and he mailed them out. And he finally got a hit, mm-hmm. and the hit came from DC, and DC Dark Stars. Yes, DC brought him on, and yeah. his first his first artwork, his first comic book interiors was for a Flash Annual. I think it was Flash Annual. Okay. Flash Annual number five. <clears throat> and when you look at it, okay. on one hand, it is just as indicative of the time as you would think it would be. It looks exactly for sure, like for sure. what you would think it would look. Circa 1991, 92. Mm-hmm. Yet, mm-hmm. there's this spark inside of it that makes it look just a little bit different. Just a little bit. And it's like, mm-hmm. hmm. He wants mm-hmm. to be Jim Lee, but he's still got mm-hmm. his own thing going on. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. then from mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. he jumps on the Dark Stars. And he's still holding on to that Jim Lee, you know, um, aesthetic. But you can definitely see, like, right. now he got something else going on too, you know. Right, right. And then, man, who, who was inking them? Was it was it Art Thib- Who was inking them? Then was it Art Thibbert or was it or was it uh, was it Scott? Was it Scott Williams? Scott Williams was solely old boys, man. But he had that, um, you know, old oh, I mean, oh boys, man. I mean, I was old boys. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it was, um, it was, um, it, it wasn't. I hate to say it like this. It wasn't a name anchor that we know of, you know, that you would think. Right, okay. but on Dark Star, right. it was an anchor who at the time uh, was doing that type of style, but it, his name completely okay. escapes me at this time. Okay. However, okay. you do talk about Scott Williams, and coincidentally, mm-hmm. um, it was Jim Lee seeing his work on that Flash Annual in uh, Dark Stars, and he also did an Incredible Hulk like eight pager, like an annual around that same time, and you know okay. Jim Lee was like. I think we need this guy over here, Wildstorm. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recruit him. Nice. And so he brought him on nice. over, and once he got in there, it's almost like that's all he needed, Joe. That's all Travis needed. That's it. And that's when he got inked by Scott Williams on a uh, Wildcat special. And uh, okay, that Wildcat special. Oh man, you look at that. It's like okay, yeah. All right, all right. He's yeah, yeah. he's about to yeah. become Travis. That, that, 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's what because that's so he started relying heavily on those washes in there, man. He started he started like like really getting into the, the detail folds of the of the of the of the clothing and the lines in the face and the characteristics. Are just like wow, this is another level. Because the thing you the thing about the thing about um, his earlier stuff, especially like Dark Stars, Dark Stars. One criticism I, w- I would give them was was <clears throat> as as representational as he was, his faces were, were, were still kind of squat. Yeah. Like he is he com- very, 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 very compressed, yes. you know, <laughs> and kind of car- somewhat cartoony. And, you know, and, and, and Travis is nothing without, uh, a, without stylization anyway in terms of he is a stylized artist, but his style is so unique and so, and so authentic, it almost looks real. In some cases, it does become real because he uses a lot of, a lot of references, but also he has his own personal, you know, like, like, like veracity to it and, 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 and hunger for for like good quality depth to it, you know, detail. Yeah, exactly. And you know, and that really, and you know, it's funny you can, Traces evolution almost exclusively on Wildcats, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because once he does that Wildcat special, you know, Lee, you know, backs off of drawing the regular series with, like, I think issue number 13. Mm-hmm. So Sheree takes over on issue 15, and it's immediate. It's like, oh, man, who is right? this? <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, man. Like, what? Yeah, man. What is going on? Sir. You know? And, and yeah. And so... You were mentioning before the mics came on, you were mentioning about, you know, um, this uh, cover that he had done with, of course, Spartan is always facing a demonite, right. <laughs> you know, but, <laughs> but, you know, you had mentioned Santino of the uh, Black Razors, and, yeah. you know, all of that, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. With that, you can start to see him. That, oh, man, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Um, the White is holding up um, one of the New Horizons covers. Yes, sure. I'm, I'm going to get to that. Okay. That's, on, that's on my check. Okay, okay. Um, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're all good. You're all good, man. We, we, too much Travis love to go around. See, right, right. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And once he gets on to Wildcats, it's like, man, from like issue 15 to about, I want to say 26, about 10 issues, mm-hmm. you know, he makes a drastic jump. You can yes. trace it. Like, yes. oh my God, this guy is getting, man, he's getting wild yeah. up in here. Yeah. Again, no pun. Yeah. But it's just like, <laughs> this is this is amazing. Yeah, man. Now, and, and, and check this out too, D. Check this out mm-hmm. as well. Around issue 21, your boy comes on to start writing the series. Mm-hmm. The one and only. Alan Moore. Alan Moore. Yes, sir. And Ooh. that to me. That's like the best Wildcat stories ever. Seriously. Period. Yeah, period. No, no chaser, no nothing. Explanation point, sir. And it's just like, yes, yes. And it was also around that time as well that Travis was so uh, detailed and so intensive with his, um, with his um, pencils. Yeah. Uh, the studio started calling it, you know, Travis, um, on those earlier issues of Wildcats, they... Had he had what they call like a Mike McNola style. Okay. Like if you look at those earlier issues, there isn't a lot of blacks. Right. And the line work is very kind of open because mm-hmm. he was. Just, they were just like, you got to get it done. You know, we, we 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 can't. We're already late with these books. We can't afford to be too much later. Right. You got to just get it done. <laughs> right. Yeah. So he had he he adapted his style for that and the anchor for those was Troy Hubes okay. Troy Hubs I'm sorry Troy Hubs, Troy Hubs. Okay. and so so he was good Troy, Troy Hubs good anchor good anchor for mm-hmm. him you know mm-hmm. but it wasn't until it wasn't until those later issues where he was drawing you know Alan Moore's stories mm-hmm. where he was just like oh man oh when when they go back to that home planet of Kara yeah yeah man yeah man <laughs> Oh, when, when 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 war blades, when war blades on the bridge, and he's and he's performing those performing those those ritual techniques he does with his war blades, man, what? <laughs> yes, it was, or or it was, D. What about what about when they were showing again? They were showing the rituals in their home world. What about 
when Zealot was amongst her tribe, right? Yes. Uh, female Amazon. Yes, yeah. And she goes through the bloodletting ritual. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's a tapestry. If you were to take those pages out and set them side by side by side by side, it would just unfold like this tapestry of Zealot disrobing. I mean, she still has clothes mm -hmm. on, but she's disrobing for this ritual. Right. And it's like her warrior tribe, they're cutting her, you mm -hmm. know, say ever so slightly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she's making her way down the line, down this gauntlet. Yeah, and that's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, beautifully Crazy. illustrated, beautifully written. It's like, wow. Yeah, and um, in that story arc, in that same story arc, you know, there's this um, part where Spartan is kind of flying around the city. They're on Kara, trying to find out, you know, what's really going on, because things are not as idyllic as they would seem. Right. And there's this one splash page of him um, against like this field, this background of stars. Mm -hmm. And part of him is in silhouette. And the other part is like coming towards you. And that's not in silhouette. It's, it's a great it shot. Is. It's it a is. great I shot. Read, it's like, almost, like, almost like, he was like, like a diver. It's like, almost like he was, yeah, I remember that. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. He killed it. He killed it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so... Yeah, with that story arc, it I think that really set to establish like, okay, we got to watch out for this guy. Yeah. He he really ascended when he got finished drawing those pages. And the crazy thing is, D, it got to the point to where he was so behind, he wouldn't even draw the whole book. Yeah. <laughs> they started having to have him draw half the book. But the, but that half that he drew right. sold. Man. Yeah, yeah, sold. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but but let, let me pause right there for a second mm -hmm. and just, just kind of ask you, what was like your first, um, I, I don't know if you answered this earlier, because mm -hmm. I definitely know mine, mm -hmm. but what was like your first um, introduction to uh, Travis, like personally? Like, like what was it that you saw of his that really said, all right, I got to watch out for this guy? Um, man, uh a couple of things. First thing is that my first introduction to him was 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 actually Dark Stars. I did see him see him in Dark Stars. Okay. Yeah, and I liked it because yeah, I was a fan of Jim Lee, and it did like it did like Jim Lee's work to me. Like okay, this guy is obviously carrying the mantle, and uh, of what Jim Lee uh, start does in terms of uh, illustration and penmanship and, and pencils goes. It's like okay, I'm with that. I like Jim Lee, you know. Mm -hmm. But then. You know, I was like, okay, this is enough Jim Lee stuff now. Let me, let me, let me see what else he has. What, what else, what else can he do? You know, and then, then he got on, then he got on uh, Wildcats, man. And just show and prove, man. Show and prove, bro. Yeah. And and I was like, wow, look, look at this guy's stuff, man. I mean, look at look, this. He, he's doing, he's doing like. He reminded me a lot at that time. He reminded me of of uh, of um, a young Steve Rude, wherein. Rude, Rude, hmm. Rude's, Rude's work is always very, very, like, like, um, a lot of story, a lot, a lot of, lot, a lot of gestural uh, work involved with it, and and just very, very aware of the the changes of the body and the form. So all all the, all the changes in the body and the form were very believable as you as he moved his head a certain way, his arm, and now how things fall and the weight of things go. His his his, his, his realization and 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 drawing is very very. Um, grounded in in how uh, reality actually works in terms of physical the physical goes, mm. and then to add to that, man, his technical chops in terms of making something, making uh, pieces of armor and pieces of of of, of gear and, and vehicles believable. I hadn't seen that level of of, of abil ability and, and and believability in terms of technical know how since John Byrne, since Byrne since Byrne Robotics. Mm. I mean, he his stuff. His, his his stuff rivals and not surpasses John Byrne in some inter, in some instances, you know, in terms of believability, and that's that's that says a lot to me. I mean, because Byrne is that guy to me, and Travis is a you know a welcome a welcome second. But um, yeah, man, I I love his stuff, man, and and Travis is just like he can he can he can do no wrong for me. Um, he's become a, you know, I, mean, I wish I wish he were a little more, um. You know, prolific in some ways, or or I wish I had a chance. My, my ultimate, the ultimate thing for Travis to me is if he had a chance to be on this new version of the X Men with the done by Hickman. If he were doing that, man, mm -hmm. it would be like there'd be nothing that could be able to surpass it. 
that's that's no that's no, that's no uh, disrespect and no lack of shine on the on the artist that was doing the recent X Men issues for Hickman because he did a great job too. But I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Travis on top of that, Travis is Travis that, that's going that that does like what um, he did for like Meta Barons, and you got mm. you got you got the ultimate compliment for an um, artistic adventure, a creative adventure. Oh man. No, no, I, I definitely agree, man. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, that's the thing with, with Travis, though. It's, you know, everybody, of course, you know, anytime we find something good, be it food, comics, what right. have you, anything that you enjoy, you definitely want more yep. of it. You want it to be more prolific. Sure. But, you know, sometimes that's why we appreciate it because, you know, there's so little of it or it's in limited quantity mm-hmm. that you're just like you just and, and any morsel that you get is just like so appreciated and it's almost like like a like a like a drop of you know water for for the thirst exactly you know what i'm saying because we do be thirsty for that charade <laughs> art you know for sure <laughs> for sure for sure to the point to where you know oh, to the point where we became rapid fans man and and, and you know his work. He's he's just a he's that guy, man. He's done so much work outside of comics, man, and commercially, you know, back in the comics that it's like, wow. I mean, he did like the, he did like the Pepsi Coke can, a Pepsi Pepsi can guy, man. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I was gonna mention that. Yeah, he did a Pepsi man for a, a Japanese um, a Japanese uh, cola, okay. uh, a Japanese Pepsi, a Japanese Pepsi uh, advertisement. Okay. Now I remember seeing that when I was a when I was a teenager, just thinking like. Damn! Right. Not only is he doing American comics, he's doing Japanese stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Wow!" Yeah, man. Damn! Hey, 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 yo, hey, yo! And I know you, I know you're gonna shake your head at it, but do you know that Hype Williams actually got him to do a poster for Belly? Yeah. Have you ever yeah, seen that? Yeah, that was great too. It was awesome yeah. too, man. It's like, damn, they should have used right? that. They should have right? used that. It was that. nice, man. Damn. Yeah, man, it was gorgeous, man. I liked it, bro. It, it, remind, it reminded me of like in, in, the, in, the, in the vein of uh, Drew Struzan in terms of the level of, 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 yes. of execution. I was like, wow. Wow. He really is a, That's a student. That's exactly what it is. You know? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And I'm glad you brought mm-hmm. that up too, mm-hmm. D, because, you know, around that period, like 97, 98, mm-hmm. you know, like like we mentioned um, at the top of the mic, uh, at the top of the show, mm-hmm. rather, um, he starts going into like this illustrated face. It's like it's like almost as if as if he said, OK, 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 I got this line art. Right. Down. No problem. Right. I got the line right, work. Right. Down. What will happen if I start adding some some ink wash mm-hmm. and then I start adding some colored pencil and some acrylic and gouache to that? How would that look? Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, man. Oof. Oh, I shit. Right, right. Oh, I sick shit. Sick now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And yeah, then man. that's when, for me, that's when I was like, oh, man, this this dude. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. yeah, he could do it. That's where I come in at. Yeah. Uh, about that 97, 98 period okay. where he started doing those um, those New Horizons yes, covers sure. that you mentioned. Yes, sure. The ones, yes. The ones that interlock. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. And you got to buy all nine, and they piece together. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. D hold them up. Wild Core, uh, Wildcats, uh, Divine Right, That's it. That's uh, Gen 13, That's it. Uh, DV8. Yes, sir. All the joints. All joints it was nine total. Yeah, yeah. And once you got all of them together, yes, you could actually put them, and they would form a big old poster. Yes, sir. And in fact, D, it was so popular, you probably remember this. They sold the poster itself. Yeah. Like they actually came out with the poster with all of them together. Yeah. So you could just buy the poster. If you couldn't find all the variant covers, right. you could buy the poster. Right. And man, it was like, oh Ooh. man. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then that started me just buying his books just for the covers. I was like, oh man. I got Travis did the cover. I'm oh, I got to buy That's the book. It. Oh, that's it. wow. That's it. He had a kind of pull, man. Yeah, man. I had a friend who actually, he was a huge Travis fan. He probably still mm-hmm. is. But <clears throat> I had a friend named uh, Chris, Chris Sanders. Okay. okay. Uh, when I met <laughs> I him. Tell me the story. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I met him, he was such a big fan of Travis. He drew just like him. Wow. I mean, he drew exactly like Damn. him. Like with the um, watercolor aquarelle pencils, mm-hmm. um, the same squinty eyes. Mm-hmm. 
and just everything. And he, he just loved his work so much, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? <clears throat> and he had a bunch of his stuff. In fact, you know how on like your drawing table, you have like a blotter mm -hmm. on it, like, like a, a clear sheet on right, top of right. it? I think that's what you call it. Uh, I think it's called a blotter or something like that. Anyway, underneath there, underneath this clear thing, was all these Travis images. He had wow. those New Horizons covers. Yes, sure. He had stuff from Wildcats all cut out and arranged underneath there. And I, I, I went over to, when I went over to his house and went down in his studio, I was like, wow, damn, this, man, Chris, you really love uh, right. Travis. Right. This, huh? is, this, like, oh. this explains like, everything. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he was just like, and he, he's, a, he's a brother from California, so he had that kind of California accent. He was like, you know something, uh, Adrian? I love Travis. You know, Travis was, he's awesome. Right. He's awesome, Adrian. You know, right. and so he sold me on it. I was like, hey, you ain't got to tell me, man. I know he's awesome. Right. But it's just so cool to see that he had that effect on people. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned, you know, just artists were taking so much influence from him. I mean, you saw artists draw one way. And then when Wildcats X-Men came Ooh. out, completely changed course. Ooh. That was like the all time just. <laughs> That's, that's it's game, over. That's game over. It's man. over, man. When 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 show was that, that that Wolverine that Wolverine panel, man, where he, where he's take, where Wolverine's taking taking a bullet show, and he's he's coming coming towards it, uh, coming out of the wall, and it's like wow, wow. That just that yeah. just that just totally that changed everything <laughs> for me, man. That changed everything for me as far as like line quality, line work and whatnot. And it's like wow. That that, that was that was he, that was him being inked by by uh, Scott Williams, right? Uh, believe it or not, it was several okay. people. Like, here, here's the thing that people don't know about that that book. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, he did the ink washes and everything, and he did the pencils, and he inked some of it himself. Right. But some of it was actually inked by other people in the studio, okay. like uh, Scott Williams, right. uh, Richard Friend. Richard Friend, uh, yeah, yeah. Who would ink him. Yes. Podcaster. Richard Friend would ink him on the second Wildcat series. Okay. That's yeah. right, that's right. And we're going to get to that in right. a second. Um and, and other people in the studio, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And But even with that, it's just like, you look at that and it's almost just a work of like singularity. Mm -hmm. Like it was so strong, so powerful that you had almost a generation of comic artists just look at that and say, I want to do mm -hmm. that. Like you had Lanil, Lanil Yu. Yes. He drew yeah. more like Wills Portacio at the beginning of his mm -hmm. career. And then once he saw that, for a few years, he switched over to that Travis feel. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You had Lanil. Yeah, you had Olivia Coypel. Yeah. He drew one way. Right. And then after that, he drew another mm -hmm. way. And then people are starting to bite, like, um, the little headshots that Travis would do. Um, they were biting, like, his line quality. Mm -hmm. They were biting his ink wash. Right. They were biting the way he drew, like, tech. You know what I'm saying? The way he drew machinery, like you were yeah. mentioning. People started biting off yeah. of that. So it's like, yeah. you know, Travis, he had a lot of biters. <laughs> but it brought, he, he right? did. Right? <laughs> but it elevated, Industry. it elevated comic art for, like, a decade. To, to a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it really yeah. did. He, he was the man for about five mm -hmm. years there. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And so, yeah, so once he does Wildcats X-Men, he's still working for Wildstorm, mm -hmm. of course, but his, um, <clears throat> his, um, you were talking about him being prolific, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that, um, I was reading a, um, an oral history of, uh, Wildstorm. Mm -hmm. There was a book that came out, like, a few years right. ago called, uh, Wild Times, and I had mentioned it on the show before. Yeah, yeah. And there's a whole section in there devoted to Travis. And one of the things that um, an observer said was, you know, in the studio, people think that Travis was so slow. He wasn't slow. He was just very methodical. Mm -hmm. Like, he would be in there. He would come to the studio every day and be working. But when it was clear that he was the star of the studio amongst all the other star right. artists in there, right. and... This was at the late 90s where the industry wasn't doing so good. So they were trying to sell books. Mm -hmm. They were trying to sell these books. Mm -hmm. And if you had a Travis cover on it, the book would sell. Yeah. That many more 
maybe a couple more thousand. Damn. So Travis is sitting there trying to work on Wildcats X Men, but the editor is coming in and saying, "Hey, hey, Travis, do you have time to do a uh, a cover for DV8? Right. You know, yeah. or Gen 13? Yeah. 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 And Travis would, you know, I was like, okay, sure, right, no problem, right. And you know, that would take time away from him doing that." to do this for this editor. Right. So it would seem like he's not kicking, you know, creating a lot of work, but you know, that's not the case. It's right. just that his <clears throat> talent was so immense that people wanted a piece of it for their thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I could totally see that too, man. And uh, I could totally mm-hmm. see it. Exactly. It's like, so, yeah, he gets a bad rap for being, for being not prolific, but in reality the situation was he was being spread so thin and and the, mm-hmm. the level of time it takes for him to do what he did, man, and, and be so detailed was like, like a commitment of himself. Like you're, I, I didn't realize that, but yeah, it makes sense now because I remember like yeah, like DV8, those weren't his interiors, you know, but it, that was his cover, you know, and and, and various other like um, the, the cover he did for Divine Right, you know, was like wow, yes. still Jim Lee interiors, but that cover was 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 magnificent. I love Jim Lee stuff too, but I mean he he brought he brought the interest and and pointed interest and impact to the to the to the story that. Other artists simply didn't have because they were so busy doing line work. Travis was doing painterly stuff now at this point, and it was just like in, in his own way. He wasn't yes. he wasn't following the path and patterns of other artists that had gone before him. He was like like paving his own road, and that that takes a lot out of an individual, you know, to to go that direction. Yeah, it sure mm-hmm. does. It sure does. And he was doing a ton of covers. Ooh. Like there's a um, there's a Star Trek cover that he did. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, Wildstorm had gotten a license to do Star Trek comics, the Next Generation comics. Vaguely. He did this cover. Um, and you were talking about Drew Struzan earlier, mm-hmm. who even Travis will admit at that time was a huge influence on him. Even as early as when he was doing line work for, um, you know, his early run on Wildcat. Okay. You know, sure. You, you, you know, uh, Struzan does like the sun, the, the sunset uh-huh. and does the squiggly lines around yep. it. Travis was doing that. Yeah, he was. You know what I'm saying? He was. In, in, some, in a couple of his covers. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, you know, you can see it in his illustration work, mm-hmm. just the way he was using you know, the um, acrylics mm-hmm. and uh, colored pencils. Yes. You know, and working it. Working it hard. Which are huh? the same materials that Drew Struzan uses for his paintings. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Acrylics and colored pencils. You know, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's, it's some um, black and white, you know, ink wash. Exactly. A bit. Exactly. So, so it's like, man, once he brought that illustrated, you know, bent to his covers, it was amazing. There's no turning back. It was amazing. There's no turning back. You know? <laughs> you know? Exactly. Exactly. And that's the thing. That's the thing too. So, once, once, once you get to a certain level, because what happens in, as, a, as an artist, as you know, as you grow, it's about exploration, right? And you grow based on exploration. And once mm-hmm. you once you once you hit a plateau, you know, you you're still trying to grow and find a, other other things to grow upon. And that's what Travis's story is to me. I, I, as I follow him, it's like I watch this guy grow from who he was, which was a decent penciler to a magnificent fine artist in some regards with his execution and on his, on his later works. And that level of expectation becomes its own own manacle. Like, I have to do it this way because mm. people are expecting me to do it this way. If I don't do it this way, it's not acceptable, you know? So talk, mm. talk, 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 mm-hmm. let's, let's, let's talk about that, man. Let's talk about expectations, man. Let's talk about, like, how expectations can, can kind of crowd you out and kind of in, in some way become its own, its own uh, uh, hampering to your, to, your, to your level of, of, of output, man. Because I, I know you experienced burnout for a while. Yeah. That is an excellent point, D. Mm-hmm. And thank you for bringing that up. Mm-hmm. Just exactly like that, mm-hmm. you know, because when he um he did he did have some burnout. Like there was a period like after like ninety eight mm-hmm. where you didn't see nothing from him. Mm-hmm. You know, you mm-hmm. saw a couple of covers. I guess he had in the works, but it's like it's almost like he took a step back. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and we find out the reason he took a step back was he was working on the relaunch of that second Wildcat series. Okay. You know, and that first issue of that new Wildcat series, mm-hmm. say Magnifique. Fire, yeah. Just like, oh, yeah, man. Fire, like you say. It's, Absolute it's fire. It. Just fire. <laughs> fire. <laughs> Just like, oh, my God. It's like, it's almost like he had that one-two punch of Wildcats X-Men. Bam. Right? Wildcats Volume 2 Number 1. Bam. Bam. Right? It's like, oh, man. But... In accordance to what you just said about expectations and having that millstone around his mm-hmm. neck, you start seeing issue two. Yes, it's him. Mm-hmm. Then issue three, 
uh-oh, why are you just drawing just 12 pages? Right. Issue four, why are you drawing just six pages in this right. issue? And then five, okay, you're just not going to draw no pages? <laughs> oh, man. And then, <laughs> and then issue six, yeah. he only drew like four pages yeah, in there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man. man. What's going on, Travis, man? Damn. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I believe, like, you're right. I believe he was experiencing some um, burnout there. And he was saying, too, <clears throat> I think I read in an interview mm -hmm. that at that time, this would have been about 99, 2000, he was saying that with the sale to um, DC, because um, oh, yeah. Jim Lee had sold Wildstorm in, like, late 98, going into 99 to DC. Yeah. And he said once DC took over, the whole climate of the studio changed. Wow. He said it became instantly much more corporate. Mm. So he had so there were people from DC proper walking around there just like, why are you guys doing this? Why is this bullpen wow. set up like this? Why don't y'all do that? Editorially crushing them and, and managing mm -hmm. it and nitpicking what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what Wildstorm was about. Yeah. yeah. So he yeah, so he said, you know, and a lot of other artists, too, at the time said they just started working from home. <laughs> they were like, they just stopped coming in. They were like, nah, I'm, I'm nah, good. I'll just I'll just work at the right. crib. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But but again, you know, when that new Wildcat series launched, it was such a big launch. And oh, my gosh, I was so excited for it. I loved mm -hmm. it. I loved it. But. The wait between issues was crazy. Yeah, if 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 you if you remember, like after that first issue came out, that second one didn't come out for like three months. Yeah. yeah. So what is it still a thing? And then the next one, mm-hmm. And then on and so on and so on and so on. Like so mm -hmm. many delays and mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And Travis got a bad rap for mm -hmm. that, you mm -hmm. know. And you know, people were like, "Man, what's going on? Why can't he draw the book?" Right. And, this is not what I bought the series for. I bought the series because I thought he was going to be drawing right, exactly. it. Now you got fill-in artists and everything. Right. And it's just like he was just getting burnt yep. out. Yep. Um, and it happens. That Wildcats X-Men took a lot out of him. And then y'all want covers. And then y'all want him to draw interiors. Yeah. So he was like, man. I mean, uh, I mean mm -hmm. he, so. Good. No, 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 I mean, when you're, dealing, when you're dealing with doing your, your regular chores as an artist for a 20, 23, 24 page book, and then do the marketing for it too at the same time, and everybody else is marketing everybody else's book as well. It's that level he was doing it. That's just like um, 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 virtually impossible. And, and back then, it wasn't like it wasn't digital. It was still it was still his stuff was still drawn by hand. It was still painted by hand. It wasn't mm. it wasn't photoshopped or anything of that nature. Any of those other other programs that became so proliferate later on in the nineties. So he was doing the, hard, doing the hard way, you know. He's doing the the way which he yeah he, he had a physical <laughs> he had a physical footprint to, to put down and make sure that it was drying stuff the way, drying the right way and all this stuff, man. So when you look at Travis and stuff, guys, have another respect for this guy. The fact he was doing it manually, like manually, manual yeah. labor. It wasn't it wasn't it mm -hmm. wasn't it, it, good. No, 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 no. To your point, mm -hmm. though, he was so intensive about it. Do you know, like, okay, as artists, we know, like, you know, you know, Crescent Illustration Board, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And you know how, like, you can take it, and you can peel it off that hard cardboard backing? Mm -hmm. He actually said that he would do that because they were still, when they would go to the printer mm -hmm. to have it scanned, he was peel imagine this, D. You draw this beautiful cover, right? Yeah, yeah. And the only way that you wanted to make sure that the resolution was right when the um, scanner went over it at the printer to drum, print it out for a cover. It was a drum scanner. Yeah, the, exactly. Mm -hmm. He said that he peeled it off that cardboard backing, the illustration board, and he took that to the printer and said, please be careful, <laughs> but use this on the drum scanner. Jesus. Damn. Dude. Jesus, dude. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, that's like, that's like Rembrandt <laughs> or Leonardo da Vinci <laughs> saying, <laughs> here, take this Mona Lisa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> please, but please, please right. be careful with right. it. <laughs> <laughs> It's like like peeling off a piece of, of, of the Sistine Chapel and 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 and, and, and the, yes. you know and taking it, the, the paint to the uh, 
to the printer and, and get it and try to make a rep- replica, <laughs> replica of it. It's like, wow, no way. Exactly. It's like, please, please be careful. Right? <laughs> and, think, and think about That's it, man. That's so crazy. It is, man. Think about it, man. I, I, I didn't realize it was that bad, man. To, but to think about how sensitive and how delicate that is, you know, you're thinking with acrylics. Yeah. Acrylics is plastic, bro. And acrylics will crack. Mm-hmm. I think I heard it. We, we, did, we talked about mm-hmm. this in the past with another guest on the show. Might have been Joe Phillips. Where he, he talked about he taking uh, doing the same thing that Travis did and taking it to a printer and having to screw up one of his paintings, man. Like literally, once you take it off the board, oh. yeah, it cracked in places and it just it was I guess it may have been too too thick and not even enough for it to stretch. And, and I'm glad those days are gone, man. As far as that 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 kind of that kind of reproduction goes, that's just that'd be painful. That'd be painful, bro. You yeah. know how disheartening will that be to have when your when your yeah. baby's like totally like just just like disrupted and defiled like that, you know? Yeah, man, for real. That's man. Mm-hmm. That's just that. That's literally that's insane. It really is because you know we've we both have worked with illustration board, and you mm-hmm. know how delicate it is. Yeah. Once you, even even when it peels on the edges, you're just like, dang, that's so flimsy, right. man. Yeah. Ugh. I I I couldn't imagine. No sir. It. I couldn't imagine. No sir. It. But but speaking to that though, and this is where we get to to me, the this point in his career. This next part, I would almost liken it to, and you tell me if okay. I'm wrong, I would almost liken this point in Travis's career, the next thing he's about to okay. do, is what Frankenstein was to Bernie Wright. Yes! It was like the best he could do, the absolute peak of his powers, yes. but once he did it, it was set his up. work was not the same afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't. No, no. And what what we're talking about is when he did, he was approached by the legendary mm-hmm. Joe Dorowski. Yes, sir. Jodo. To work on. Jodo. 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 Yes, sir. <laughs> Jodo. Jodo. Yes, sir. <laughs> to, a, 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 Alejandro. Yes, sir. Jodorowsky yes, sir. To work on a brand new story mm-hmm. featuring his character. Mm-hmm. Well, his and Mobius' mm-hmm. character. Uh, the Meta Bear. Yes, sir. And it was a original graphic novel. It was supposed to be 48 pages mm-hmm. entitled The Dream Shifter. Yes, yo. Oof. And, and man, D, when the, aver- the first advertisement of that came right. out. And remember, we had just mentioned that, you know, Travis had backed off for a while. Mm-hmm. So when he stopped doing that Wildcats thing, it's like, where, where, where is he? What happened? Where did he go? Where did he go? Man, you want to hear what's right? up? <laughs> <laughs> but when that first advertisement came out of Travis Sheree, Alejandro Jodorowsky, the Dream Shift. Right, right. Dream Shift. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're like, what? Oh. What? Right? Mouth agape, yo. I was like, what? I was just about to say that. <laughs> now a gate. Yeah, Mine yeah. was a gate. I remember I remember um flipping through previews at the shop, at the comic book yeah. shop. And you know, you know, just looking at oh, okay, some Superman shit. Right. Oh, okay, that's some Wolverine right, shit. Right, right. X-Men shit. Oh, Sorry, sir. oh my right. god. What is this? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was that moment, yo. It was like, oh. It was that moment. It was like, yes. it was like okay. and then it became legendary in the wait for it. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you see like little bits and pieces like, okay, here's, here's a panel here. Here's the Meta Baron in a cockpit. Right. Here's the Meta Baron riding this giant lion worm monster. Right. And he's just like, man, a, a, a D, to, to satiate people before the book came out, they came out with a print set of six prints yes, I know. that I gave Yes, sir. You, right? Much appreciated, sir. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah. And those six prints right there. And, 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 they, and, they, and they were blown up. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, if it looks like this blown yeah. up, can you imagine what the rest of the page is going to look Sir. like? Can you imagine what the rest of the book is going to yeah, look yeah. like? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Damn. the anticipation, the the, the 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 anticipation for what the anticipation for what was to come as far as the whole series goes was was palpable. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you literally, quite literally, I felt myself salivating at some point for the for this book, man. Like I was like, I can't wait to get my hands on this book, oh, man. man. <laughs> oh, we all wore, D, we all wore, but it started becoming, and I hate to say it, but it almost started becoming a, a end joke. Right. It's like, right. man, one year, yeah. two yeah. years. Three yeah. years. 
Dang, this thing almost his latest dream shift. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, it was bad. Yeah. It was like, oh man. Yeah. And then <laughs> it finally comes out, but I think only 20 something pages of it comes yeah. out. And it comes at a later date, like four or five years later. Mm-hmm. It comes out in a, uh, a special one shot called Meta mm-hmm. Baron. Uh, Ome- Alpha and Omega. Mm-hmm. And no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Let me take that back. He had done a couple of pages of that. And I think it was meant for Dream Shifters. They were like, we got to give them something. We got to give them something. Right. So he put they put that in their little one shot. It was like three pages. But the rest of the Dream Shifter pages comes out in a book called Weapons of the Meta Baron. Okay. And that came out much okay. later. And basically, Humanoids was like, look, these are all the Meta Baron pages we ever got from Travis. Mm-hmm. We ain't hold nothing back. Right. This is everything that he drew for <laughs> right, us. Right, everything. Right. This is it right mm-hmm. here. And it amounted to like 20 pages, uh, two covers, and a couple of the spot illustrations. Now, and it was like, damn. Help me understand something. So mm. the, the story was, was Dream Shifters, but they took Dream Shifters because, and they gave, it was Jimenez did a lot of the work inside of Dream, inside of Dream Shifters too, right? Didn't, didn't Jimenez take some of the art choice over for the story? Consecutively, how'd that work out? I've forgotten because I never had a chance to get my hands on the book. Actually, sorry, I just couldn't get my hands on the book. Oh, okay. No, no, no. You're all yeah. good. What happened was it was actually a retelling of a version that Jimenez had actually drawn, okay. like panel for panel almost. Okay. But it was done in that Travis style, mm-hmm. that Travis illustrated C- cinematic, style. Cinematic, yo. Travis you know. is cinematic, yo. Like you think we think you think mm-hmm. about the lighting yes, and man. just God, yo. My God, you think you think oh, about man. Him in terms so, of like, good. No, no, you're good. You think about him in terms of like, like, like his ability to tell stories, man. It's 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 very much like a shot for shot, like like, like like, like freak. Um, what do you call it? Clinic for anybody that wants to do comics and or movies, man. He, he was he was almost like a, like a storyboard artist, man. In a lot of ways, with an illustrative touch to it, man. Mm. In my opinion. Yeah, yeah, like like he he would be one of those. He would be just a step aboard, a storyboard artist. He would almost be like a keyframe artist. Yeah. Like you would bring him in to do like an illustrated keyframe. Exactly. This is exactly how we want it to look on screen. Yeah. The colors, <laughs> the the lighting, yeah. the posing, yeah. everything. Yeah. This is exactly how we want it to yeah. look. Like he would be a, an excellent keyframe mm-hmm. artist. But, you know, to that though, once they came out with all that stuff, you didn't hear from Travis for a long time. You didn't. And that's where that comparison I said, as far as like Bernie Wrightson and Frankenstein, Mm -hmm. it's like once Frankenstein came out, you look at Wrightson's later work, it's not the Mm -hmm. same. It's not the same prior, like it was prior to that. And then Frankenstein was just this all time masterpiece. Mm -hmm. It was like, it's as if there's no way that he could live up Mm -hmm. to that Mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with Travis. Mm -hmm. It's like the very thing that brought him to these Olympian heights. Mm-hmm. Became a millstone, mm-hmm. an albatross around his yep. neck. Yeah, yep. you know what I'm saying. Yep. And it's just like, damn. After those, after Dream Shifters, and by Travis's own admission, he had actually moved to Paris to work on the book and to be closer to Joe Dorowski. Okay, because Joe Dorowski was like, "Look, I want to be able to kind of supervise what you're wow. doing. I want you to still do what you do, oh, no. but I want you to be closer here to the company." So that we can work with you and make sure that the book gets done. Him, his wife, they moved over there. Okay. They moved to Paris. Wow. They had a loft. Wow. And he was there exclusively only to draw that book. Wow. And he said it got to him. He was like, he was chasing perfection. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. much that he literally burnt out. Yeah. He you burnt can, out. You, you can see and he it. He had man. to go to. Yeah. And he had to go to Joe Dorowski and say, I'm sorry, but I, I can't I, I can't finish this. Mm-hmm. I I can only do this much. That's all I can do. Wow. And Joe though was like, all right, well, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. So they brought in another artist to finish the other half of the book. Right. But it's like, oh man. Wow. Damn, Travis. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. man. I understand, but yeah. man. Yeah, that, that was that was that was the greatest that was his greatest triumph in a lot of ways. And sometimes and without being too dramatic, melodramatic about it, it's it's also one of his greatest failures in a lot of ways. Like, I mean, you know, the the level of expectation as as a as a creative man, an artist, 
Like we're we're fans of the, of of the form, but we're also like practitioners too. Yeah. So we so we so we can relate like to, in terms of like what it takes to do this and get the amount of energy and muster kind of energy. And I can't imagine the amount of pressure. Like you, you would be you would better off in a lot of ways staying in California because to have the mm. to have the immense cultural uh, combination of of dealing with dealing with this iconic work and dealing with the person that created it and the expectations of that person created, knowing that you're you're, you're going behind Mobius. Knowing that you're going behind, mm. don't you go going by him, Jimenez? Jimenez? I mean, come on, one? Yeah. You know? How can you how can, how can yeah. you not feel that, man? How can you not feel that? And and Travis, he's a he's a very delicate speaker anyway. You hear him talk and, and, and hear and communicate. I have had I've had the, the pleasure of seeing him at several conventions and one in particular we'll, we'll, we'll talk to we'll talk about a little bit later, when he's very un, very yeah. understated, very unassuming, very appreciative, very very much like he doesn't take any yeah. he doesn't take any of this shit for, for for granted, man. He's not one of those guys that's like, yeah, I own this business, you know, I I'm that guy, I'm <laughs> that guy. Yeah, you bow down and kiss my feet, and kiss the soles of my shoes because you know you'll get something from it, you know. He he um he's appreciative, man, but that that but that inside of himself. The, inside that that level of creativity, there's a delicateness to it, you know. And that delicateness, you know, it it it, it can it could be either either underappreciated or 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 it could be its own, like you said, albatross, become its own problematic situation. Mm. And that became that for him, man. But fortunately for us, he did kind of get he did get over that, and he gave us yet another insight into his work. Now, you know what? Real quick, I'll tell that story I told you earlier. I was in California several years ago. It was before the massive black thing. Now, 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 now. Let, let, <laughs> Go ahead. Well, but hold on. Okay, okay. Let, let me preface okay, this okay. by saying, yes, this is this is for those who don't know. This is um the the, the following is a story that has been told <laughs> on our previous incarnation. But <laughs> and and <laughs> but no no no. But 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 D is going to retell it again because it's so great and I think it's indicative. It is a snapshot in time of where Travis was mm-hmm. and. Want at once the fan adulation of mm-hmm. him, the level that he had ascended mm-hmm. to, and his personality as mm-hmm. well. So proceed. Dude. Sure. So um, I forget the year exactly, but it wasn't 2005, two thousand five, two two thousand fifteen, because that this is this preceded this preceded the the, the uh, famous concertart.org dot org situation. There's another time when I was in Cal- another time All I was right. in California, and he was there. And he he, had, he, saw, he saw his table. People were the fans were starting to line up behind his table. He hadn't gotten there yet, but his line, they saw his, his sign, his sign, uh, uh, desk, desk sign. They were like, "We got to get there and get a chance yeah. to get to sign some books and or do the artwork." <laughs> well, his, his avid fans, his, his, his rabid fans, the ones he had commissions for already, were already in communication with him because he he. I guess he's that kind of he's that kind of guy. He talked to the people he was getting commissions from, and he, and he wanted to keep an open line of, line of communication. So very respectfully. Yeah, uh, they came up there, and this is at this time he, he was working on he was working on that uh, X Men um, pinup they did with mm. uh, with Storm and Cyclops and Colossus and all on the profile shot, moving moving towards moving towards the left, moving from the right to the left side of the camera. He was working on that. Okay, and it wasn't fully complete. Yeah, most of it fleshed out and done already, but there was still some 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 you know uh, room to be done as far as the, the final final you know pieces, final work to final strokes go, mm-hmm. and. You know, he goes. The guys are, are approaching for the commission, and, he, and it's like it blew my mind. He's like, he's like, it's gonna, and, he, and they, they said, and I guess there was a, some some talk about price, and I overheard them say to him, over over, over and say this, gonna, you know, guys, in a very under, understated tone, it's, it's you know, guys, it's like like five thousand dollars this time. It's like five thousand dollars this time. <laughs> this time, <laughs> damn! I wish I could say that. Hey, uh, this time, man, it's gonna be about five thousand. Know? But I, I bet you they enthusiastically was like, "Oh, oh yeah, sure, there, no there problem." Was, they they, they did okay. not, they did not flex back, sir. There was no flex back. <laughs> so, so whatever the commission was, it was like it was well warranted. It was well, it was well within with their means to to meet that price. And he just, he's like, okay, you know. And it's like, wow, wow, what must it be like, sir, man? You know, to to have that kind of that's that's crazy. you know. And the thing is, like, you know, there there. Are, the prices in the market go up and down compared to what your what the supply and demand is, and what you know what you can, what you can what you can you know get from their audience or get from the people that want to purchase your work is up to you. Other artists, I'm sure, have that same kind of that same kind of experience as far as what they uh, what they will will give you, but and uh, what they'll get what you'll get for the price for what they're charging you. But it's the idea of what he was doing at that point in time was was I never I heard an artist like like charge that much, and the way he did it, it wasn't like in some cheesy. You know, uh, be grateful. I'm giving you this type manner. It was it was in a very hushed tone? You know, I was like, I'll be like, I'll be like, yeah. like, like, 
do you think do you, it's almost like do you think I deserve this amount? I think I deserve this amount. Can we come to some agreement on this? That kind of thing. It was very understated. Wow. You know, very very soft and very genteel. Man, I was like, wow. I was I was under, overwhelmed by that. Not just by the pricing, but also by his his his, his demeanor and how he handled it. You know. Yeah, and you and you know, and you're thinking because um, <clears throat> the first time I saw Travis in person, mm-hmm. the only time really is um, my first Heroes okay. Con. Yeah. Um, in yeah, Charlotte, yeah, yeah, and it, it was it was two thousand six. Yeah, Captain America is a picture they did for the for the for the heroes. Yeah, yeah, promo. Yeah, oh yes, hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> it's like oh damn, right? man. I I still got the badge. My 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 badge from that year has nice. that on there. And um, it was an all star lineup. Yeah. It was Travis, right? Brian Hitch, right? Rob Liefeld, Jaime, the, uh, both the Hernandez brothers. Hitters, yeah. Like it was just an all star lineup that it. year, and. It was so crazy. I couldn't even get to his table. It was one of those things you see in a movie where the, the rush, the throng of people, and the person is the actor is in the back, like, wait, yeah. hell, hell, and they just get swept away. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't approach his table. Yeah, I believe you, it. You couldn't even get close I to it. I believe it. I believe it. So, and it's so funny because at this time, when I did catch a, a peek of him, like, you know, kind of between two people. It's like, well, let me see what he looks right. like. He had shaved his head like uh, Tyler Durden <laughs> in right. Fight Club. Yeah. He had <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so his head was shaved. And, and you know how when you think of, like, you know, in your mind, you're thinking, like, you know, these stars, they must be titans mm-hmm. almost. They must be broad and strapping right. people. He's, He's not. not. He's a very smaller yeah. frame guy. Yeah. And and, and you, I remember thinking, it's like, let me see what he looks like. Okay, I see the shaved head. And you look at his proportions, it's just like, oh, oh. Yeah. He's a smaller right. guy. Oh, okay. I was thinking he was going to be like, <laughs> right, 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 right. you know, like throwing lightning bolts or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. But no, just a, just a smaller frame guy. You're like, ah, yeah. okay. And he's just sitting there just... As the fans come up, he almost seemed almost to me. He almost seemed just slightly uncomfortable at with having that yeah, attention yeah, on him. Yeah, yeah, just slightly. Yeah, like yeah. his body language was kind of compacted a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like he was signing books and 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 trying to talk and everything. Mm-hmm. But you can tell by his shoulders mm-hmm. and his kind of you know body language, like mm-hmm. he was maybe a little bit uncomfortable with having this adulation yeah, on him. Yeah, very, very, you know? very much, very much an introvert, not an extrovert, man. That's, that's why I classify him. He doesn't, he doesn't, have, he doesn't have the same kind of outgoing, gregarious personality that, that, that uh, Jim Lee has. You know, Jim Lee is like, oh, I'll talk to you. Right. Or, or, or Neil Adams, I'll talk to you, and this and other thing. But, you know, but he's, he's very much internalized. He internalizes this stuff. And, and thank goodness, because his internals, when they, when they come out on the page, sir, that's all that matters to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it's so funny because even on his website, mm-hmm. and there was an article in a, well, not an article, it was a chapter in a um, recent book that mm-hmm. I got last year called uh, Masters of Comic mm-hmm. Art. There's a section on Travis, and it shows his studio, but there's no picture of mm-hmm. him. Like, he's, it's like he's narrating as if he's narrating about himself in the studio. Nice. Yes, well, this is where I sit at and everything. He shows his empty chair. Yes, right. You think he's like, this is where I sit and do my work at. Yeah. 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 And I I was like, wow, that that says a lot about his Mm -hmm. personality. Like, focus on the work, not on Mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? The the work is the Mm -hmm. thing, not Mm -hmm. me. Me and my personal, you know, life and everything. That's that that's the that's off limits. Exactly. Don't don't worry about it. As it it should be. And that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I got no problem with that. Yeah, Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Which brings us to kind of begin to wrap mm-hmm. it up, which brings us to present day. And he still does work. He still does commissions. Mm-hmm. And yes, his commissions are still, well, they're, they're more than 5,000 now. But <laughs> 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 I mean, when you go comic art fans, his originals are selling for like tw- upwards of $20,000. Jesus, dude. The, the original. Yeah, yeah. And sure. in fact, D. There was a sketch cover that he did for Ghost Rider. Okay. Now, it, as you know, sketch covers are totally blank, right? Right. Yeah. And the artist can just, you know, do sketch it. on there with a pen, whatever they want to do. Exactly. All right. So, Travis, <laughs> there was a Ghost Rider sketch cover that was just all black. Okay. okay? Had the Ghost Rider logo on it. Okay. And so, Travis takes a silver, one of those silver um, pen? Sharpie pens. Yes, yeah, I love those. 
he just does a yeah, he just does a quick sketch of like, you know, a ghost rider head, you know, and it really nothing detailed or anything. It's just, you know, a ghost rider head right. and it's signed Travis. Right. That sell that sells now for $900. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Just that little yeah. thing. That little thing. I'm looking at you. you know? Wow, that's crazy. And it's like, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. It is. It is. So nowadays... He's still doing, you know, um, some painted stuff here and there. And it looks totally different Mm -hmm. from the stuff that we know from his classic work, his now classic Mm -hmm, work. mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot more shadows, a lot more blacks in there, Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know. And not only that, he's taking to working digitally as Mm -hmm. well. And his digital work is, it's almost, almost indistinguishable from like the inking work that he's doing yeah, now yeah. by hand. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like, okay. Yeah. So he's, yeah, so he's embraced that new technology mm-hmm. now and that's what he's mm-hmm. doing. But I don't know. Do, do you think that he would ever come back to interiors? Because the last interiors that he was supposed to do, and this is after Dream okay. Shifters, of okay. course, he, when, when the ultimate, when the Marvel Ultimate Universe was still a thing, mm-hmm. he was supposed to be doing a project uh, with um, the Ultimates. And in fact, he did a few pages okay. of it. As he is wont to right. do. But that's it. Like, five pages that he was out. <laughs> and then after that, <laughs> and then after that, he was supposed to do a uh, a Wolverine and Captain America story set in World War II. Nice. And he had, he, yes, he had made the preview images <laughs> of it. And it's like, oh, man. Oh, boy. This is going to look so right? fine. This is going to be right? fine. <laughs> And that's all you would do it, just rubbing your hands right. and still rubbing your hands. Right. Doesn't, doesn't appear. Make you start a fire right. with exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. friction. <laughs> that's the only fire you're going to get. Exactly. <laughs> just that friction. <laughs> wow. But I think after that, he was just like, man, you know, I think I'm just going to do spot, spot illustrations and covers going forward. Yeah. And so that's what you've seen him do to present day and to bring it full circle. And at present... The latest covers that he's going to do is for this uh, Mark Miller uh, book that's coming okay. out. Um, I think it's due out either this month or next okay. month. So, you know, he's he's had quite a career. I mean, he's been doing it for close to, I think, close to 30 years yeah. now. Sounds you know right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's Over crazy. 30 years. It's crazy. Yeah. But, man, I, 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 yeah. I, kinda, I, get, I, get a, I get a special passion in certain kind of – when I thought he was gone – from from the from the scene altogether, I was I was pleasantly surprised to see who did his own thing with, with Space Girl, you know. Oh, thank you. We cannot leave this episode yeah. without mentioning that. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank Sp- you. Space Girl was just like a, a a welcome a welcome like extra piece of 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 pie in my in, in as far as like artistic world goes, man. I mean, you thought he was gone, you realize he was doing his own thing, man. It's like okay, he was doing these episodic one shot panels. Uh, they, they put put on, on on Twitter at the time. He was just showing a little bit, a little bit a day, a little bit a day. I mean, a little bit, every other day. when he felt like doing it, it's that's when he would do it. it was, there's no real schedule for it, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you realize, okay, this is not just a character that he's doing a pinup of. This is a story he has that's, that's unveiling before our eyes. And before you know it, it started picking up momentum. And before you know it, he was doing like it was like uh, I think it was like one one a week. And before you know it, it was like he he, he, he mm-hmm. serialized this and, and put it into a book, his first volume of Space Girl, you know, which. I understand went for a very a very nice uh, uh, amount of money too as far as consolidation goes. I wanted to get one of those, but of course I didn't. Sp- I don't speak French. I couldn't get one on the market at the, at the time <laughs> where, where it was being published. So I was like, "Damn, man!" But um, fortunately, uh, his his followers are and fans are very are very rabid and very very giving. So they they share online all the pages that he's done for the, at least for the first volume. And I have, you know, a folder on my computer, just that. So if I want to read it, yeah. if I want to read it and see where he's going with it, uh, I, I, um, I have an opportunity to read it the way that the other fans have. Conversely, it reminds me a lot of, it mm. reminds me a lot of uh, um, one of our favorite artists we, we talk, about, talk about all the time, and one of Swain's, Swain's favorite painter, uh, Jeffrey Catherine Jones. It reminds me of, 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 mm. of IMH a lot of ways, where it's just that, it's that one okay. panel storytelling where sometimes it may be like, one word balloon and tells a story for that particular that particular time. Yeah. He's, he's got this. He's got the 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 George Lucas um, classic serial films, the black and white films, noirish um, um, a cliffhanger down to a science. He knows how to do that. Like he'll, he'll lead you. He'll leave you on a on a on a, on a cliffhanger, and then when you come back, make you want to come back and, do, and 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 see more. 
And that's a talent of itself, man, to do one panel, two panels, and then leave and come back a week later. And hey, here it is again. You know, and they pick up where you left off and you see where the, where the, where the serial continues. And uh, I, that's why I, I, love, I love the Space Girl thing based on that too, man. It's like, wow, where's this going? And that came back, that, that almost brought me back to his, 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 his Wildcat days, his Wildstorm days, where he's that level of detail, that level of, of concern for the, the panel design, for the, 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 the technical uh, execution and the storytelling. I felt that again, invested. Like he was, he was having fun again. This meant something to him again. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. And that that's what I was going to say, too. Like, you can tell, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in transference mm-hmm. in art. You can tell when an artist is feeling sad while they're doing yeah. something or when they're elated while doing something. And you can tell that this was such a relief uh, for Travis mm-hmm. to do. You know, when you look at those Space Girl images, like, it's very reminiscent of, like, those uh, classic newspaper very comics. Very much so. Yep. Those comic exactly. strips. Al, yeah, Al Williams, yeah. man. Al you Williamson. Know, like, like Prince Valiant. Yeah, yeah Al yeah. Williamson. And yeah. Hal Foster. Yes, yeah. And, you know, you read the strip and be like, ah, cool. Right. Cool. I, I, I'll be right. back you know, Sunday. next exactly. Sunday for the next exactly. one. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, man, he um he's, you know, he's one of those um just once-in-a-generation talents mm-hmm. that's just... You know, when you look back over the breadth of his career, there might not be a lot of his work out there, but there is enough out there. And you see his influence throughout just the industry. And there's so many artists that are kind of like, you know, the children of Travis Sheree. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, man. And for a time, I'll admit this before before we sign Uh off, man. (laughs) When I went to art school, this was like in spring of 99, Um, that first Wildcats, uh, the volume two, that first issue, it just came out and I, I devoured yeah. it. I, I was just, I, I, I carried that with me everywhere. It was the Bible, yeah. <laughs> and it was. And when I, and when I started at the Art Institute of Atlanta mm-hmm. in 99, mm-hmm. it was so crazy that you would be at, you would be in class and in between classes, you know, we talk and, you know, joke around and everything. There were several other people that also had that same issue. <laughs> yeah. So we would, so you, you know, you, 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 you know, see somebody across the way. It's like, Hey, Hey, is, 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 is that, is that, that on Wildcats, right. man? Yeah, right. man. What you know about right. that? Man, it's Travis right. away. Oh, right. it, it's shit a kinship, out. right? <laughs> exactly. So it was so crazy. D <laughs> that's how bad we were. That's how sorry we were. <laughs> we, you know, you'd be reading, and like, okay, well, what, what does Travis use to do this yeah, stuff? Yeah, no. I okay. get it. Okay. Yeah, when you start at the Art Institute, they give you a starter pack, mm-hmm. right? A student starter right. pack. This is everything you would need for classes. Right. Well, in that starter pack comes a whole set of epitograph pins. Nice. You know, it comes in a black right. box with the seven yeah, pins. Yo. I was like, ah, oh, yes, yeah, so I finally got the first piece of right. it. <laughs> Sheree uses epitographs. Right. Yes. <laughs> So then I read I read in another article that he uses aquarelle watercolor pencils. Okay. These are pencils that you put them down mm-hmm. and they're watercolor based. So you you put the color down, mm-hmm. right? And then you take a mm-hmm. brush and you're able to brush it and use it like watercolor. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, they sell those in the student store downstairs. Right. So I was like, ah, I'm gonna get that. <laughs> I got the second piece. I got the second piece of the right. secret. Yes. Yeah, man. And so, and so, and so then I saw that he used ink wash. So I'm like, okay, I, 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 can, I can use, I can use this bottle of ink. So I got all my pieces together like it was the Ark of the Covenant. Right. And I'm thinking, oh shit, <laughs> I'm about to do some Travis shit. Right. Yes. Right. Right. And so a project came up in class and I was like, this is the perfect time for me to use all these techniques. I did and it sucked. (laughs) (laughs) D, it was a mess. It was just a, it was a mess. I was like, oh. But I had everything. Right, I had right, everything, right, 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 right. though. Hey, man. You know how it goes, man. You, 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 can have, you can have the ingredients, but it still takes a cook to make it, bro. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. That's what it is. That's what it is, man. That's, that's what it Damn, is. Yo. Yeah, man. Wow, wow. <laughs>
That concludes this episode of Sidebar Forever, hosted by Dwight Clark, Swain Hunt, and Adrian Johnson. You can find us online at sidebarforever.com. Any emails or questions can be directed to us at sidebarforever at gmail.com. And also, subscribe to us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram.